I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So I watched a movie I've been putting off for the first time, and that's um, okay. Free Guy, the Ryan Reynolds uh, thing oh in Disney+. Oh my God, Plus. I want to watch it. Is it good? Is I hope it's good. All right. It's the exact same premise as the most recent Matrix movie, but good. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Because, like, I saw the trailers for that movie, and it, like, looked legitimately funny. It looked like it could go either and way, and I was like, you know what? I'll give it a I, try. It, it was actually funny. I, okay, good. Because, like, I don't know what I would have able, been, what would have happened to me if that movie wasn't funny. It would have been a very deep, <laughs> like, blow of psychic damage, I'm going to say. Yeah, well, it, it's hard to go wrong with Ryan Reynolds, and then it's not too far in that you realize, like, oh, this is... I mean... This is the first... If they took the new Matrix movie's first 20 minutes that was good and just made that the whole movie, this is that movie. Yeah. Well, like, so... So, if we're talking about Ryan Reynolds' movies that they do wrong... How they do them wrong... Yeah. At Wolverine or... Uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine is pretty much like the codifier and the trope signifier of how to do Ryan Reynolds wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> that he's literally, he's literally like in entire part point of like Ryan Reynolds being like funny is the fact that he's hilarious when he speaks. Yeah. That, that's. And then you take away <sighs> ryan reynolds ability to speak that's wrong in so many levels because one they took away ryan reynolds ability to speak two deadpool is called the merc with the mouth and they took mm -hmm. away the mouth part from that movie and i think that's what inspired the new deadpool movie is that ryan reynolds hated ryan reynolds was his depiction so much that i don't know how directly related uh the new deadpool series is to that but i think there's a direct correlation to him being like screw this i want to go make an actually good deadpool uh movie mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's yeah the also the fact that he was in detective pikachu is pretty good now that i'm thinking of, i'm like looking at his at his, oh, his imdb uh, filmography yeah and like i forgot the fact that he was in defective pikachu and he was the voice of pikachu and i kind of love that and i forgot that he was I so that good so much he was so good in that. Yeah. I mean, he's, like, pretty much good in everything he's in, as far as I know. Like, I can't think of any, like, standout things. You know what the weird thing about about uh, Deadpool is? What's that? He doesn't have a healing factor so much. He actually has, like... Cancer. Super aggressive cancer. Yeah. Like, that's all he has. He doesn't have, like... He's not like Wolverine. He just has like a super aggressive heal. He has a super aggressive cancer. Yeah. That like it, it's it's kind of awful he, and terrifying. He's and Mr. Like, Me super, seeks the hero. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, hero is a strong word though. Anti-hero? Is that more uh That's more He's more an anti. He's not a bad guy. He's just a guy. He's the Deadpool. Wait, wait, what? He he appeared on the Honest trailers for Deadpool and Deadpool 2 as well as Logan. The, what what's Honest trailers? Like when you know when they like do an like okay, so it's a YouTube channel where they do a trailer for a movie but like they kind of make fun of the concept. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like call out the tropes and everything yeah, like that. I've seen those. So it's like it's pretty funny. It's just like yeah. So he made an actual appearance for those. Yeah, he was an actual voice appearance. Oh, shoot. All right. Right he on. He also owns Mint Mobile, which is how I see him most of the time nowadays. Yeah. Ditto. Ditto, ditto. Oh, fun fact. So I, I've, I've taken the hair pills What for keeping what I've still got. And did you know that they work aggressively well on 
your ass hair. It's, I don't know if it's been doing, I've been doing them for like a couple of years now. Had, can't tell, you know, I'm sure they're doing the job because, you know, it stopped going back. The booty, che- booty cheeks hair is just thicker and stronger. Longer. So are we talking? I got cousin it back the there. Quest- the question I have yeah. is, is this, is this cheek or is cheek. this crack? Cheek. 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 Okay. Cheek. Okay. Okay. Because, because. Cause crack sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, there's there's there are different levels of manageable, and I got the more manageable. <laughs> uh, yeah that that would be that would be like the worst situation in my opinion. Th- like yeah, just <sighs> lots of not good things about it. Like that's lots of knots. Lots of, lots of knots. That's I mean, there's a reason you never see uh, uh, Chewbacca chowing down on a choco taco. That's there's a whole kind they, of that 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 whole like notion doesn't exist in Wookiee culture. No, they don't eat anything. No, no foods with sauces or soups. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that sounds about right. Yeah, actually, no, that's wrong. Can- canonically, they they make um from the Star Wars special. There's a cooking show, and uh, Chewie's uh partner is making uh oh, that's right uh some form of soup the, who does the who does the cooking show in that special it's a character it the, the joke is that the wookie has two arms but the chef has more than two arms while they're cooking so she can't keep up with the tv and that's that's the joke <laughs> you know what sucks like the star wars special actually had like the potential to be a really funny thing and like really good um, but like, it was just such a terrible like misstep. It had potential. It was the found footage fest had did a breakdown of like all of the skits of it and how it, every single one of them could have been good and then just fell so flat. Uh, I, I mean, think they did that semi recently. The, the only thing that that wouldn't have been good is that weird fucking dance sequence. Yeah, like when they go to uh, like, like the alternative universe. God, what was it? Yeah, the weird. Uh, it just got weird. The whole thing just well, got like, weird. Like, also, doesn't uh, Lumpy's the the grandfather, right? Yes, correct or something like that. Like, he's just a pervert, and like, oh. it's not a funny. He's not a funny. There's pervert. VR porn. He's just like he does. He yeah, does VR yeah, porn just, in the Christmas he special. He does V. He just does VR porn in the, the the holiday special. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was a yeah. that was de- totally a decision that they made. I mean, you could they they <sighs> they thought of like you know what the worst part is? Somebody took the time to write that joke out. It was shown to people, right? And then it was filmed. And then they still thought it was a good idea to release it. Yeah, like, it got multiple green lights. It made it out of the cutting room floor and then still got a thumbs up after. Like, why? I honestly don't think there was a cutting room floor for the holiday special. I think they just threw in whatever wa- they wanted to. <laughs> it was someone's... Uh, like, that's the reason it's, like, an hour long or whatever. Yeah, someone's nephew had a movie maker, and they are like, ah, you can go for it, Timmy. That's... Oh, it was broadcast in mono. I mean, it doesn't need I don't know stereo. Why that surprises me. It doesn't. But, uh, yeah, that wouldn't that well, wouldn't have saved it. The dance sequence. The dance sequence, man. Nothing could save that. Nothing. I mean the the cartoon was not bad. No, I, I never saw the cartoon. First appearance of Boba Fett. It's the first appearance of Boba Fett. Oh, okay. I yeah. did not know so that. The, the cartoon's actually, it's not bad. It's a little weird, but it's not bad. Okay. I wouldn't call it bad. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Um, it's like the one salvageable thing from the entire like. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the new ones that are good. Say a lot. Yeah, I mean, the, I haven't seen the, the I haven't seen the Lego Holiday Special one. Oh, I haven't seen the Lego Holiday Special, but at least the Star Wars stories have have gotten not terrible. Like if Book of Boba Fett was just more Christmas specials, that would just that that would be a. Th- I almost kind of want that now. Just an- another that now. really now bad. I still haven't seen the Book of Boba Fett, but like that now makes me want that as the Book of Boba it's Fett. It's fine. Than it the Book of Boba Fett. It does the thing that you want it to do eventually, 
and that's all you know it, that's all i'm gonna get into about it if you're like oh, i wish they'd do this uh, there you go they did it <laughs> fair enough um so if you're just joining us uh this is in fact not a star wars fan cast this is cryptopedia i mean <laughs> i mean it, it could be it's an it, <laughs> we talk about it a lot in, so here's the thing right i you and i have a mutual friend who really likes star wars a lot yes the thing is, actually, we have two mutual friends who really uh, like. We got Wars multiple, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, like by like a lot, lot, right? And because of them, my perception of what enjoying Star Wars is is completely skewed. Oh right? yeah. When I first started, when Christina and I first started dating, I would like talk about Star Wars, and I'd be like, "I'm not that big of a fan." Then she'd be like, "What?" <laughs> Yeah, the 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 they will they will they're not in the middle of the bell curve. I'll say that <laughs> they're yeah. to the far right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho, sorry for cutting you off. Oh. I just needed to uh, to I needed to articulate the that whole fact because it's oh yeah fascinating. It's the the same things happen to me about like different topics. You'll be like I don't, you're like. It's an interest I have, and people are like, oh, no, you know too much, actually, about this. And you're like, oh, I just mm -hmm. know people who are way <laughs> into it. Um, so welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind, where each week we'll take you into a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And uh, today we're covering the Beast of Bladenboro. Sometimes the uh, vam Bladenboro Vampire and sometimes the Vampire Beast of Bladenboro. All not super creative names. It. But it's, uh, it, it, it boils down to it's a big old vampire cat. We got another big cat on our hands. Huh. Cheetor. Another, another Cheetor. Uh, Beast Wars. It's the, the specific <laughs> type of cat varies, but it's it, Dracula cat. Brandon, I literally looked up into the like I looked up and I looked directly at a Cheetor when you, you made eye contact. When I said that. I literally made eye contact with a Cheetor action figure when I said that. Perfect. Like Like Brandon, I can I I think almost every point of view no, okay, there's one point of view in which you can't see a Cheetor in my room. So Is there let me uh, let me make this full screen. Oh, that didn't really make it much bigger, did it? You can't you're not Oh I see one. Nope, oh, nope, I see no. a Cheetor. I see a Cheetor. You can't see it. You yeah. can see a Cheetor. It's yeah, there's a Cheetor right just there. Just over your left shoulder. Oh no, there's a couple Cheetors. Look at that. No, there's only one. Oh am I wrong uh I might just be looking at a different yellow one. You're well there's a snarl. Maybe you're seeing the snarl, maybe you're seeing the razor claw. You might be seeing oh. the razor claw up there. Yeah. Gotcha. There's your studio, man. That's set dressing. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I need to. I need to do a turnover, but that's not. That's not related to the beast. Beast of Bl Blimber. No. So our story begins in Clarkton County on December 29th, ninth, nineteen fifty three. Um, a nineteen fifty census record shows the town having a population of about five hundred and eighty nine people. Uh, witnesses describe the creature as a sleek black five foot long uh kitty cat big old big old dark boy um i mean that's that's a decently sized cat yeah five foot cats like, no joke I, I it's it's a little bit like i think i think it's like a touch bigger than a Maine Coon. do Maine Coon? am i wrong in Maine Coons are fucking huge dude am i wrong in what i think oh you know what I never saw them next to a human. I just saw them playing with toys. They are... Yeah, Maine Coons are, like, big. fucking huge. Yeah. They are... Oh. Yeah, actually, a ma actually, 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 the Maine Coon might be very close to that, that size. Yeah, uh, 40 inches in length, which is four, about a foot shy-ish. Yeah, about a foot shy. Hey, I didn't know that, but I was pretty close. Yeah, so uh, 
That's a potential Maine Coon. Um, on December 31st, 1953, two dogs belonging to a resident of Bladenboro were found dead with a significant amount of blood near their kennels. Their owner reported that the dogs were, quote, torn into ribbons and crushed, end quote. Um, saying that my dogs... I mean, let me just say something for a second. Yes. All right. This is a hot take. This is a hot take. Hot take. Um, I like dogs... Yes. Right? I don't own dogs. But, but, maybe a cat got back at the dogs for all the shit the dogs do to cats. You know what? There was a, they, a cat, a stray cat saw the movie Cats vs. Dogs what through if, someone's living room window oh my God. and formed a coalition. What? What if it was like, what, what if it was like <laughs> just a roving gang of cats that were just like, fuck it. We're taking back uh, the kennel or whatever. I don't know. This movie exists with multiple endings. I know it does. Okay. I know it I does. have it on there's DVD. Multiple, there's more than there's more than one film in the franchise. I am saddened about that news. I was happy with just the one. Um, I think there are two. <laughs> Damn. Uh, my dogs put up a good fight. There was blood all over the porch. Big puddles of it. There was a pool of saliva on the porch. It killed one dog at 1030 and left it lying there. My dad wrapped up the dog in a blanket. That thing came back and got the dog that nobody's seen that oh, dog now sense. Now I kind of feel, feel bad. <laughs> now I, now I kind of feel bad if I'm making the joke. There's, I mean, the, 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 the dog's had opinions that justified that. Um, at 1.30 in the morning, it came back and killed the other dog and took it off. We found it three days later in a hedgerow. The top of one of the dog's heads what? was torn off, and its body was crushed and wet, like it had been in the thing's mouth. Uh, the do other dog's lower jaw was torn off. Uh, and that was by Wait, Johnny Vouse. I'm confused. So how did they find... Okay, okay. So two dogs... There's two dogs. One dies on the, on, One's on the killed. property, and the do dad wraps it uh -huh. up. The other one just disappears, and they assume it's been killed, and then they know it's been killed when they find it. When they find it's, okay. its body over here, its head over here, and its jaw over there. Okay. Um... So I did just look it up. There are three cat, Cats versus Dogs movies. Cats and Dogs movies, right? Oh, no. Um, there's Cats and Dogs, okay. which was released in 2001. Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore, which I want to just, like, take a second to acknowledge the fact that that is a reference to Pussy Galore. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, which is kind of hilarious. And uh, Cats and Dogs 3, Paws Unite, which I think is when, like, do, cats... Do they, like, join forces? The film, covers, the film covers two furry animal rivalry, rivalry termination agents, Roger and Gwen, who live in the same building in the suburbs of Seattle. Oh, uh, okay. So, Brandon, what is, uh, what is furry animals rivalry termination? <laughs> it's for... It, it's, they're, they're, like, animal putter-downers. No, it's it's fart. It's for oh. They're two fart agents. They're fart agents. That <laughs> it's a dog and a cat working together though. Yeah. Okay, they jo they team up. It's like Deadpool team up. Yeah. They, they, oh, I want them to make those movies. The team up movie. I'd love like thirty minute specials of like Deadpool team they up. They did do Deadpool and Korg. So yeah, but like I want to see Deadpool and Rocket Raccoon and Deadpool and Ace the Space Trucker and. All that kind of stuff. Fair. And then the cool gorilla guy whose name I'm drawing a blank on. Um, further deaths gorilla were... Guy. Yeah, there's like a, like a, a s evil genius gorilla. Are you talking about Gorilla Grood from DC Comics? No, it's in one of my... I've got the comic upstairs. It's in one of my com uh, team-up uh, comics that I have. Kenneth Hale, maybe? Yeah, it's been a hot minute ago. Um, further deaths were reported in the subsequent days. On the night of January 5th, 1954, a pet rabbit was found cleanly decapitated and still warm. On January 7th, a dead dog was found in a pasture near the Bladenboro Swamp, and a goat was also reported to have died with its head flattened. Um, so with the exception of the head flattened thing, this is all things that dogs can do. This is all things that dogs... And any predator in, like, a small rural area can do to any 
uh, especially North Carolina. Yeah. There's definitely predators in North Carolina that can do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, an online article calls the first witness local woman, but an image of the Riley News and Observer front page names her as C.E. Kenlaw. So I was able to find the name of the person in an article. It, it conti- But... But it continues the trend of women in and newspapers articles relating to like just never get cryptids. names ever. It's crazy. They never get named. Their first names are never included. Yeah, ever. Yeah. So now it's fucking insane. Uh, so the the, the front uh, page article titled "Vampire Charges Woman" reads as follows. What? Yeah, vampire charges. What? Not like not as it in like a legal like, court like, case. Like there's no vampire showing up to a honestly, courtroom. Honestly. Honestly, I would be interested in tort law involving vampires and humans. That would great. That's what we do in the Shadows season four. <laughs> I would love if they turn it into I mean, a courtroom drama. <laughs> to be fair, uh, the psychic vampire could totally like that. Would be like right up the psychic vampires. Colin Robinson. Oh, just thing. oh, that would be fantastic. Like just outright reading just like Lee. oh that'd be fantastic all right like like that would totally be the psychic vampires thing i mean he's already terrible that's how he would being, win like the office fuck face but like still the episode where he gets crazy powerful was amazing uh a large marauding cat uh has killed and sucked the blood of at least seven dogs charged a woman here tonight uh, but turned back and fled into a swamp when she screamed and her husband rushed onto the scene. Police chief... Seems like a bitch. Seems like a bitch. Seems like the the the, the cat, I mean. Yeah. Not, not the one. She, she pulled out her, I don't know. her no-no she, can and a spray she bottle. She could be. She could be, but, like, I have no idea. Yeah, no, she definitely had a no-no. Like, it seems like this could be solved with a no-no can yeah. and a spray bottle. <laughs> so, if, it, if screaming scares it away. Yeah. Like, you see it sneak up on you, you're like, no, you just start spraying it and it just fucks off. But oh, it's just a bunch of people who don't understand how to deal with cats. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. It's just a cat. Like the whole thing is just one cat who's just gotten too full of themselves. Yes. Yeah, like if you want to make this vampire go away forever, put a piece of tape on it, and then mm-hmm. it'll it'll it, just keep walking then it will in circles walk sideways for like it'll walk sideways forever. <laughs> yeah. Problem solved. Police chief, or put a rubber band around its back, uh, around its back end, and then it will believe its legs don't work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roy Forbes said that the animal charged into the yard of Mrs. C. E. Kenlaw. Then she went out on her front porch to investigate uh, whimpering dro- dogs in the street. After the incident occurred, the armed posse that went out tonight to track down the and kill the vampire swelled to some five hundred people and scores of dogs. So I want to take a second. You got to love some armed posse. And are you going to point out? There are 589 people in the town. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who are those? Who is that hundred people who are like, whole town's mobilized for something? Nah, fuck it. That me. That would be me. I'd be, man, that's an awful lot of people out there. Uh, I think I better stay here. Yeah, but I don't think that you would be living in uh, uh, that particular county. No. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like living in that county kind of goes along with the territory. Now, this is a hot take as well. Living it goes along with the territory of just being a part of a mob. Yeah. The, the like, other thing is, this isn't crazy long ago, but it's still a, a time where like there might not have really been much going on in a town of five hundred people. <laughs> like, it's just a thing to uh, do. I mean, they had radio, but, like, radio sucks. Yeah. As I say, I say that as we're operating in, like, the successor to radio. Yeah, as we are we are the radio. As we are radio now. Um, And, uh, I mean, television was, like, started. Like, television existed, but it wasn't, like, super popular yet. Yeah. Like, it really, it really explodes in popularity after the moon landing, right? Because, like... The moon landing is. <laughs> <laughs> the moon landing is when like people buy a bunch of color television and yeah. shit like that. So, yeah, um, Mrs. Kinlaw, who lives in Mill Village near Bladenboro Mills on Highway 211, one mile west 
of here said she heard dogs whimpering early tonight went to investigate uh near the dog she said was what looks like a quote big mountain lion end quote and it raced from three doors down uh the dirt street in front of her house to a few feet from her house she said uh, and a neighbor had come to her aid uh chief forbes said that uh tracks on the dirt road in front of the kinlaw home were quote bigger than a silver dollar so we've, we've got some uh reference where we can do some guesstimating finally from this uh news article uh a search party so oh oh i go into it a little bit farther down you'll see some bigger pictures. than a silver dollar though <clears throat> like yeah oh we'll do some analysis in a in a, in a couple paragraphs sir like that's not like is that that big like that doesn't strike me as that big no well again four five feet is not really that big like for a cat it's big but in relative to other things not so much um so a search party from wilmington which tracked the animal last night as it moved in a three mile circle along the edges of swampy areas found tracks which revealed claws and there are a few things to unpack in this bit First is that when something dies and a heart is no longer functioning to make your blood uh, fight gravity, the blood pools and settles uh, just at the bottom. So this may account for the common claims that many of the vampire beast victims uh, were drained of their blood. There was blood. It was just, it pooled. Yeah, well, well, that's the same exact thing that we talked about with... Um with the 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 chupacabra, the chupacabra right. and, and anything else where it says drained of blood it's it's probably pooled it, it's it's usually just that it pooled and got absorbed into the ground yeah uh the second question we need to ask is are there mountain lions in north carolina and the answer is no it wasn't until the 1990s that a small population made it east of the rockies and there are quote no known cougars in north carolina uh, and that's from Jody Owens okay. of the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission. Um, so I'm not sure, but I think there might have been eastern cougars at the time of this story, though, because they went extinct in 2008. Because I I was researching this as you were reading that, because I got curious. <laughs> about the, in the state. Uh, there are, however, bobcats. I mean, they they had bob huh? they had bobcats. Which are commonly like yeah. mistaken with cougars and have an estimated track size, uh, so we can do some relative comparisons. The size of a silver dollar that would have been available in the 1950s would have been a diameter of 38.1 millimeters or 1.5 inches. Um, so if we compare that, uh, really not that to the big. size of a cougar's paw, a cougar's paw is four inches across. Uh, while bigger than a silver dollar, it is. Uh, it's so much larger that I would expect someone to use a different reference point for comparison. Yeah, that's like that. We're talking like twice the diameter, like more than twice yeah. the diameter. Yeah, for sure. Uh, some suspected uh, that it could be a Carolina panther. However, I feel we can rule these out as they'd gone extinct about a century beforehand. Okay, so Carolina panthers were extinct. See, there's the thing. The thing is, like big cats in America have like they're around more or less been going. They've been around, but they've been going extinct over time. <laughs> yeah, they they go extinct, and then sometimes they come back, and then they go extinct again. It, it's it, it not great time to be not a great place to be a large cat. Um, no, America is a pretty bad place to be a cat. Yeah. in general, a lot of the time, people people have like a weird. Cat people like cats, but there's a lot of people who just don't like cats. Yeah. The bobcat, however, is the only big cat found in North Carolina, and its paw is one and three-eighths inch across and an inch and a half long. A pro pretty close. Approximately the same size as a silver dollar. Uh, and it wouldn't be odd yeah. for one to be uh, a little larger, uh, or someone eyeballing a print in the dirt and guessing the size of a similar object would have some error in their estimate, making the bobcat my number one suspect for now. Uh, it's even, like, the right, like, size. Yeah, six feet long, 40 pounds. Like, it's about the right size. Its paw print is about the right kinda, size. It's kind of like, if we're talking sheerly on taxonomy, it, like, more or less one-to-one -one matches. Yeah, it's, I, I've never heard of them decapitating something, but as far as taxonomical description, they're, they're spot on. Uh, I mean, cats decapitate shit all the time. Yeah. Or they, uh, or they don't, and then you have to take care of it, and that's just never fun. That's no. no, I've had to take care of a few squirrels my parents' cat uh, gave up on. 
<laughs> that's that's just never fun. Uh, January fifth. No, that's not a good. Nineteen fifty four uh, articles titled "Armed Hunting Party to Seek Blade and Burrow's Vampire Beast" in the Robinsonian reads a vampire. I'm yeah. Really? Con- okay. Okay. I just want to take a second. Why did they go to Vampire Beast so quickly? Like, I know you said about the, like, talking about the drain the blood thing, but, like, that is so, like, not even. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a little extra. And it, it's probably just to sell papers. Um, especially because a lot of these are, like, front page. I think they're just trying to be, like, hey, flashy, let's sell some, mm-hmm. let's move some paper. Hey, there's only like there's only like 598 of you who are gonna buy this shit. <laughs> yeah. So like, we need you all to buy it. Otherwise, we can't continue. Except that's the, such a small market. Uh, a vampire beast that sucks blood had Bladen Borough citizens up in arms today. Armed posse's roamed the town after the dis- discovery of three mutilated dog bodies. And recently, uh, police chief Roy Forrest said the body of its latest victim was opened yesterday and it contained only a few drops of blood. He said the three dogs all had their bottom lips broken open and their jaw bones smashed back. He said the ear of the dog was chewed off and the tongues of the others were chewed out. Forbes said the vampire That's... is probably a mad wolf. <laughs> Uh, Roy Forez is working around the clock with a group of armed citizens in an effort to bring to bay the mysterious vampire beast, indicated that the animal could be a huge wildcat or mountain light. So he's throwing out okay. anything. He's making lots of guesses. Okay. I also want to point out the fact, so Roy Forez, is this a... Who's he's this, the, the police, police chief, chief. yeah. Okay. He's working with a group of armed civilians. Yeah. <laughs> now... I want to know how those meetings went, right? Now, was it... Because, like, okay, there's one of two ways, right? He's working with the armed civilians in that he's like, Jesus Christ, I can't have these people with guns wandering around the woods shooting anything that fucking moves because someone's going to get got. Or he's totally on board with it. (laughs) And, like... They're they're all like close personal friends of his, right? Yeah. And it's just like a good old boy party. There's only two ways that goes. I, there's no in between. I want it to be the former. I want it to be like there's just a group and they're all talking to him, and he's like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" Like, like a bunch of toddlers that refuse to not help you, even though you're like you're using a a bandsaw or something. So he's like, "All right, I have to come up with something to keep them occupied, so they don't shoot somebody." But really, this whole thing was just a distraction from another thing that they were up in arms about, like, the week before. Oh, yeah. He he fabricated the whole thing. He's the one who's killing the dogs. <laughs> he's, oh, he's he's fabricating it. The, uh, that, that's a, uh-huh. To, yeah. Honestly, 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 like, <laughs> that would actually be a very clever way to, it's not, it's an inhumane way, but it would be a clever way to uh, distract a 1950s mob from doing a racism. <laughs> you know what? If that's what it takes like, at, at that time period, like, you know, what's a couple dogs? Like, like honestly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, I, I don't know. There's something in my head. Like, I, I'm saying all this, and Roy, uh, Roy Fours could be, like, a monster of a person, and I never would know because I've never... Oh, John, it's the 50s. They all were terrible. He was. Yeah, that's true. You know what? Second thought. Never mind. He's a monster of a person. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to assume it. He's a white... Actually, no. No. He's a white police chief. In the 50s. In a town of 598 people in North Carolina in the 1950s. I don't need to think yeah. about what his he would have been like. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he says a lot of wild shit. I can guarantee that. Oh, 100%. Yeah, that he... 100%. He's a lot of uncles at a lot of Thanksgivings. Um, he is, he is like the, he is like the proto-uncle. Yeah, he's proto-uncle. His name's Roy. Like, he, he, he was born with, like, a Coors Light in his hand and a mustache. Mm-hmm. Uh, Although he's, he's, he's recently switched to Bud Light Lime. Yeah. Oh, after, after he did a brief stint with Natty Ice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, tracks leading away from the latest dog killed obviously were not those of a dog. Observers say they were 
uh, spores evidently left by a huge mountain lion probably weighing 80 to 100 pounds. The tracks deeply imprinted even in the hard grain filled uh, ground and led away from the latest dog killing in the community. Last night was a puppy owned by Johnny uh, that was killed. The seventh dog in that section to be a victim Wait. of the mysterious killer. It, it ate a puppy. So, okay. Okay. So here's the thing. This is something that I've been thinking about for the entire like episode. Yes. First person has a dog get killed. Right? Clearly, however, they were keeping the dog was not sufficient to protect the dog from whatever killed it. Oh, yeah. Then they put the second dog out the next night expecting different results when whatever wild animal was there now knows, hey, there's a fucking dog buffet here yeah. that I can chow down. You know, that's a really like, good point I didn't consider, which was... like. After maybe the fourth dog, you would have thought everyone would have started keeping their dogs inside. <laughs> at night, at, at least. Yeah, at night. Like, at least at night. At least at night. And now we're at like, seven. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not keeping... Like, I mean, oh. a puppy. Like, why not just keep the puppy inside for a bit? It's a puppy. That's the it's whole point. You weird. keep the puppy and you play with it. You do with Give it a belly rub. It'll be great. Uh, I just... I, I'm like... These people are all up in arms, but like it doesn't seem like any of them actually care about their animals. Yeah, they're 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 not actually doing anything proactive. They just want to shoot a thing. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, the, it's like that. It's like that uh, ghost from Australia. Yes. <laughs> uh, the the puppy was not killed in a vampire ha fashion, however. It just had its snooter chewed off. Uh, there was a brief moment of relief when the body count. Uh, was eight when it came out that a trapper named Luther Davis claimed that a bobcat was uh, 20 found, 25 pounds and scrappy uh, was caught in one of his traps. So... <laughs> scrappy. Yeah, it was scrappy. So we, it, we, they got up to eight. Uh, the bobcat was apparently close to the creature's description in the news article. Uh, or the news had articles being published titled Citizens Cheer Bobcat Killing in Blade and Man Traps Bobcat is it the ferocious beast? Unfortunately, they oh, were no. more killings. Uh... <laughs> All right, so here's the other thing. Yeah. Here's the other thing. What if it's just like a that weird kid who's just like gotten super into killing animals and like in a couple of years down the line, he'd end up becoming like a notorious serial killer, but no one knew. The, yeah, he he transitions from being on Cryptopedia to being less killer on the left, or less yeah, less lost less podcast. On that one, list. yeah. <laughs> like he he just changes technically, genres. Technically, technically, Cryptopedia isn't completely off of last podcast in the left's genre scope, but like yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so there there were a number of theories going around. One theory going around was that uh. The beast was actually an escaped police dog. Uh, what? On January 13th, the, the Robinsonian published uh, Vampire Theory Fails to Draw Comment from Officer. And here's an excerpt from the article. The theory advanced yesterday with the discovery that a crossbred watchdog form formerly owned by A.R. Stanton had escaped. Is that the beast uh, was the mysterious vampire uh, that had le at last count slain eleven dogs in the vicinity of Bladenboro. So we're, we're these people are <laughs> terrible at taking care of their animals. We're in double digits, man. Uh, like like eleven. That is just like at a certain point, you're just like not trying. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like like because like when did this all start? This is January thirteenth, right yeah. now. Right. So when did this all like January seventh? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's January on a spree. 5th, December thirty first. Yeah. So this is this is what two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah. This is two weeks. We're at almost a dog, a dog a day dying a night. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you assume that not every person in the town owns a dog, has a dog, that's like a not insignificant percentage of the total number of dogs. Uh, like a lot of the dogs in town are now. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh, the suspected dog named, quote, Big Boy by its owner was given to an Indian boy who lives near the swamp, a cross between a red bone, red bone hound and a German. The animal was known to be a vicious and blood-loving. 
Dr. N.G. Baird Lumberton, veterinarian, said yesterday that the dog theory was very feasible. The ferocious dog is a possibility. They could uh, maybe have dropped the... Oh, sorry. Th that, that's the end of the article. So the, the yeah, ferocious yeah, dog yeah. thing is a possibility. They could have maybe dropped the mysterious swamp Indian part. Like... Yeah, that's fair. I that's why I kind of I uh, when it, you said that I did like a yeah. So like that's how the the article wrote it, and I was like, oh, they could have he could have just left that out. That is this kind of this kind of reinforces my hypothesis that maybe maybe it was a distraction. Yeah, like uh, yeah, like it has that has no no bearing on the story. They're they're just trying to add some like I don't know some weird like racist Scooby Doo shit to it, <laughs> like. I mean, make, to yeah, make it seem much. more mysterious. Ooh, oh man, this! Imagine the Scooby Doo episode for this. Like, it would be personal for Scooby Doo. Oh, right, very like, much he so. Gets serious. He's like, Heat. Rock Raggy. <laughs> Rock. He's just chain smoking and vomiting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one interesting tidbit is that the creature is said <laughs> to make a sound like a woman screaming and or baby crying. Uh, so. The episode of that Scooby Doo, that Scooby Doo episode opens. It's a cold open. Um, sh uh, Scrappy Doo's doing something in like uh in his like uh, in like a cage or something. And, like <laughs> he's just kind of like, or no, no, not even a cage. He's just like taking trash out or something yeah. like that. Um, like there's like a C, like a like a, a camera. It switches over to the beast's perspective and it's sneaking up on Scrappy. And then like there's a blood curdling scream from the beast and then he you hear like you hear a a stifled puppy power <laughs> <laughs> like he gets halfway through it yeah. and then it cuts off and then it, it like fades to black and then there's like a super serious version of the scooby-doo theme that plays like i'm talking law and order style yeah scooby-doo theme right like very serious uh you got like you got you got Daphne being like a femme, femme fatale, uh, Velma's wearing like a, a fucking um, uh, uh, a, like, oh. like a, a lab coat and is yeah. like doing like swirling a. Test it's a tube. lab coat then with like shoulder pads. Huh? Oh, the lab coat's got shoulder pads. The intro song's oh, yeah, got 100%. a really strong snare drum and like an eighties guitar riff. Yeah, yeah. Then you got then you've got like uh, Fred's gonna be the police chief because. He's a total. Oh, cop. but he's got a mustache. And then, and then Shaggy, Shaggy, and Scooby are just like detectives, and they're yeah. just like the two. Basically, oh. what I'm envisioning is Scooby is iced tea. Yeah, Scooby is iced tea. Instead of Scooby snacks, it's just a fried green tomato. Oh, and like a cup. Why of a fried green tomato? Because that's what detectives eat. It's they eat fried green tomatoes and a cup of black coffee. Is that a thing? Yeah. At a diner, like they like sit alone at a table at a diner and have themselves a a, a a a black cup of coffee and a fried tomato, and then like the waitress is like, uh, like tough night, Dan, and then he's like, uh, grumble. Yeah. Huh. That's like I didn't... like like a that's more like a noir thing, maybe like a noir detective style. See, I was thinking, I was thinking that that Scooby replaced his uh his scooby snacks um with cyanide pills in case he gets caught no no oh. not 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 cyanide pills just like a lot of alcohol oh yeah like a lot like jessica like, jones levels like more than jessica jones even. like iron man like iron man practically like he he <laughs> he he replaced his i mean it would explain the burgers it explains the burgers it it explains why he's caught that robot kidney now it, it it explains a lot, like a whole lot. Scooby Doo is actually a year old, yeah. But like he's it's a it's a rough year. It's <laughs> just a real rough one. Um, in 2013, a local family reported that their dog and three of their horses had been slaughtered in the night. Uh, the dogs had been barking, and the family's son uh, Tyler investigated, and he said that there had been a strange creature in the shadows running away from the body of a dead dog. Uh, the dead animals had been drained of blood, and uh, given that the attack again happened in Bladenboro, people quickly linked it back to the beast. Uh, okay. 
So the North Ca- weird that it so the, the, there is a weird quality to this the fact that it's like so the fact that it kills four things in one night that's a little strange and three of them are horses which they're just yeah. big dogs but yeah I mean at the end of the day they're just big big dogs big dogs oh but dumber big dumber because dogs don't crib on things it's true they don't <laughs> they don't breathe themselves to death. Yeah. <laughs> horses are so fucking dumb uh, like like can we just like, acknowledge that horses that that do is, that that is that that is like a common way that horses kill themselves is breathing themselves to death yeah because yeah. like that's what all cribbing is right they just they bite onto a fence and then just breathe weird yeah a f- the all uh, the a fence a railing that you just built a car <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like anything. They just bite and then breathe to death. <laughs> oh. Oh, how did they live for so long on their own? Um I mean, generally speaking, they weren't around that kind of shit all the time. Yeah. Horses historically speaking like lived in mountainous regions. That's why their hooves grow so much. Yeah. Is because like it's supposed to be it gets worn down by like the rocks. Oh, uh, okay. And then like when we when we domesticated horses, they weren't walking on rocks as, as much. So, like, that's why we had to get them uh, shod, uh, uh, sh- shoes. Yeah, shod them, and like, it's a whole thing. It's like a, it's a, like, I think it's because they were walking in like mud and stuff like yeah. that and dirt. Is when it? They're actually supposed to like walk on on rocky surfaces. Is it just my algorithm, or have you been getting recommendations of uh, like farrier videos of people like reshoeing horses? <laughs> It's just your your algorithm. I've um, never watched them. I and, and they still show up no idea how all you... the time in my home feed. I mean, like, there's more of a reason for me to see them because, like, my, my family has, has horses. Horses, yeah. So, like, so, like, like, if we're talking about sheerly like profiles, like, my phone's been on a network that's probably Googled horse shit. Yeah. Mine hasn't. So like, I don't know why I get all this like farrier stuff. Oh, uh, that's funny. So the North Carolina ghost website did have some interesting information on the beast. Uh, Bladenboro was home to an unusually high number of showmen in prominent positions. Among these was the mayor, Woodrow Bob F- Fussell or Fusel Fussell. I'll go with Fussell, uh, who also happened to be the owner of the local movie theater. <laughs> It was Mayor Fussell who first called the newspapers and organized the party of professional hunters to come to uh, Wilmington. It was also Fussell who booked a horror movie called The Big Cat into his theater at the peak of the excitement. Adverti- wow. Advertising, now you can see the cat. We've got him on our screen and in Technicolor. <laughs> Mate, all right, I'm changing my theory. It's this dude. He's the it one. Was, you th- He's behind the whole fucking thing. Your theory thing. that it was a dude the whole time was pretty damn spot on. Uh, there was I I my 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 hypothesis just ge- keeps getting more strange. Yeah. Now, do I think the mayor was going around and killing people's dogs? No, but was he taking advantage Maybe. of it? Definitely. Absolutely, but he might have been killing people's dogs. Oh, he could have been. Proof that he wasn't. Like, hey, you see the mayor? He's been. Uh, Walking around with a machete for no reason recently. Wonder if that's connected yeah, to anything. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. And if you ever ask him what the time is, he just says, machete time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the weird thing is, it's one of those, like, spring leaf machetes, you know? The ones that are, like, carved out of, like, a Ford, like, a Ford yeah. leaf spring. Yeah. Like, it's not for anything other than just murder. So, like... He's, he's got a whole, his homemade machete. Yeah, it's kind of weird, actually. <laughs> Why do we keep voting for him again? Oh, yeah, the machete. Yeah. <laughs> he just stands by the voting booth with it on his hip. Uh, there was also another Bladenboro resident named Dick the Halfman Hilburn, who, despite being born with no legs and only one arm, had a genuinely, genuinely remarkable career. Hilburn had traveled with the circus for some years, working as a tattoo artist and running a sideshow with his partner Carl the Frog Boy Norwood. And Hilburn... What? <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. I need to know what Carl the Frog Boy Norwood looked like. Uh, you know what? I did not uh, check it out. My guess is vaguely frog-like. Uh, let's see. Boop, 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 boop. And... 
Okay, that's, I mean, that, uh, like many things from the circus at that time, unfortunate. Unf- <laughs> He's, uh... Yeah, okay, um, yeah, that's, now I feel horrified. This is terrible. That, Wait, what? Oh, I, I hope, I hope Carl and, I hope Carl and, uh, what's his name were, like, in, like, made the money from that, because, like... They both looked like they deserve to make money yeah. off of it. Of like the fact that people are probably like being really shitty to them. Yeah, he had para parasitomatic dwarfism, uh, apparently. So there's that. Um, Hilburn had returned to his hometown of Bladenboro after tiring uh, of constantly traveling with the sideshow. Hilburn saw opportunity and began producing license plates and other memorabilia, which uh, it apparently had no problem selling scores of merch. Uh, describing the incident years later, uh, Mayor Fussell said, A little publicity never hurt a small town, saying the beast was 10% real and 90% imagination. So we, we've got a, a pretty definitive answer of uh, where this thing came from. Uh, and there is a festival every year in Bladenboro to celebrate the beast. Last year was suspended for COVID, but it appears that the draw that the mayor drummed up all those years ago is still growing strong with the festival drawing 10,000 attendees annually. Wait. Okay, wait. What? Yeah. Like. What? A lot. Like was it twenty times or something like that? What is twenty that, times the original town's population at that festival? <clears throat> Beast stuff. Like I don't know, fried dough, probably, probably lots of fried dough. I mean, it's 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 a North Carolina festival. Like, yeah, obviously. Fried oh, fried everything. Fr- there's what do you got? Fried dough. You got f- fried dough. I'm sure, there's other things. I'll, fried pickles. Fried never pickles. Had a fried pickle. No, you know what you go to the, the 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 county fair for though, jerk chicken. It's always the best. Really? Yeah, it's really good. And for some reason, like there's never a line, but it's like the best. Huh. Oh, that and the lemonade. <laughs> oh, and the four H milkshakes. Oh, the four H milk. Like, you're talking about the Dutchess County Fair. Yeah, the forage milkshakes are pretty good. Although I'm surprised that the attendance to this festival are exactly what I would expect the attendance to this festival to look like. <laughs> A lot of khaki shorts. Oh, the 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 like beast. There's like a mascot that's the beast of Bledenboro, and it's like horrifying to look at. And it's just throwing like footballs out to the crowd. Yeah, this kind of this kind of feels like an episode. Okay, okay. So <laughs> the video that I'm watching, Brandon, <laughs> yeah. has they're they're in a like empty lot, like a parking lot. It looks like okay. There's food trucks surrounding the thing, right? And there's a man in a cat costume, like a a mascot cat costume. With a garbage bag. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, the purple and shirt. He's just reaching into. The, he yeah. He's just reaching into the garbage bag and throwing like yellow footballs at people. I mean, fair. I assume, like those squishy footballs, and like it literally, in no uncertain terms, reminds me of. In no uncertain terms, does it remind me of? Uh, squid billies. Like, <laughs> there's also they're playing black back in black in the background as well. So like, it's super duper like the most like you literally couldn't make it. I I <laughs> make it more of the thing. I just sent you a. Uh, I just found this. If you open the link, you'll see what I would call a not accurate representation of the Beast of Bladenboro. <laughs> hey, it's Sasquatch. It's Sassafras. It's Sassafras. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who did that? My guess is that it's intended to be Big Boy the dog. <laughs> it looks like someone's first time at taxidermy. 
<laughs> it, it reminds me of that like taxidermy lion that has like the face that like doesn't like it was clearly taxidermized by a person who had never in their life seen a lion yeah <laughs> it looks like the lady that repainted jesus on that church decided to take up taxidermy of a wolf <laughs> I I need to like I still don't understand how that was allowed to happen. <laughs> oh. Oh, they have collard greens. Oh, I love I got to make some of those actually. They're good. Huh. It's one of our uh let's see. A couple of other vendors at Including the Reen collared sandwich stand right next to the door, to, right next, uh, right next door, sold the sandwiches. The wing parade featured collared wraps and a variation on the sandwich with greens filling the inside of an egg roll shell with either turkey or fat back. It's one of our biggest sellers," said sixty-year-old Jesse Jeffrey Williamson of Nakia, Nan, Nakia, who turned smoked jumbo turkey legs on a grill. I don't know if I'd have them on a wrap. That seems weird. They're like mushy, juicy. It's um. If you imagine like spinach almost, but you just like cook it in a pan. There's actually, it's really good. They've got you. Sorry. So here, here. Oh, all right, everybody. Here's my, here, here, here's Danny Brennan's collard greens recipe. You get the smoked pork neck bone and you get the collard greens, preferably fresh ones, not chopped, pre-chopped in the bag because those are harder to Mm devein. And you throw the neck bone and a pot. So smoked pork neck bone is it's got a lot of meat on it. It's not just bones. There's meat. So you just throw that, mm-hmm. just cover with water, boil that shit in a pot for like a half hour, pull all that shit out, scrape all the meat off the bones, throw it back in there, then throw in the first third of your greens with your chopped onions, and you're going to season that with salt, pepper, on a powder, garlic powder, uh, and whatever other powders you have laying, or just everything, and then a little chili powder. And then when they cook down, you just, you do that three more times. It's going to take three hours. And then at the very end, you add a splash of white vinegar and mix it all up and bada bing, bada boom. You've got yourself some good color greens. Huh. <laughs> I was listening. I'm just like, I'm just, just looking at the festival. This, like, <clears throat> it seems like a really good place I'm, I'm to go su- people watching. I'm surprised that it draws 10,000 peoples because like peoples. I'm surprised it draws 10,000 people because, like, I'm looking at this festival and, like... So my guess is that like, the festival Brandon, goes on for several days and the 10,000 is the total... Like, even if somebody went a second day, that counted as another ticket sale and therefore another person. So my guess is it's like, 10,000 ticket sales, not necessarily that's unique individuals. grounds. And, like, the cars are da- are parked what I would call dangerously close to a rail, like a train, a railway track. Like there's a few cars that are like questionably close <laughs> to that, that rail line. There's, Oh wait, maybe the rail line is not in No, there's a, there's a crossing guard still. Yeah. I think it's still active. There's a, a, a copy I have written and you know, we'll get to eventually, but one of the theories about what the beast was is that it was actually a train because they just kept finding dead animals in the woods. But they were also like very close to a train track. <laughs> so the theory is like they made up a beast killing these things, but they were just getting hit by a train. They do trunk or tree. Oh, that's there's like a horrifying door of the Explorer like a an off brand door the explorer in on this website. I'm looking at a I'm looking at the website for the the event. Oh, gotcha. Bladenboro.org. It, it, like it, it's boosttheboro.org. Apparently it's like it does like support the local community though, so there's at least that. Yeah. Um you could go there and uh, they support uh, SP grading, paving, and stripping. We could go there for some of that. Uh, there's the Four County Electric Membership Corporation. So you've got that going. Oh, there's God. Scroll to the very bottom or like the middle of the page where there's the talent, the trunk or treat section. There is a uh, cookie monster and an Elmo that oh. are. 
horrified. I would call those aggressively homemade. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. Because, like, I feel attacked by those costumes. Yeah. Honestly, that would be scarier than, like, the scariest, like, practical effect zombie makeup. Like, somebody with, like, really convincing zombie makeup or, like, monster makeup. Yeah. That's scarier to me. <laughs> like, I would be more scared to walk around a dark alley and see that Cookie Monster Elmo combo than anything else. Well, that 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 Cookie Monster might just fucking eat you. Yeah. <laughs> it might just be an SCP. I don't it, know. It's either an SCP or what it looks like when you uh, watch Sesame Street after doing a pile of bath salts. <laughs> yeah yeah can i can i just say that like when ba that whole bath salts thing started out i was very confused when i first heard about it because i was like bath salts that's like just epsom salt isn't it oh uh, you're like this and, and, and epsom's mostly just water so they're just doing water no i think historically it started out as a good thing and then it got to a bad thing <laughs> it was it was one of those things um, well, I think there was it was a chemist who was, had a friend that had um, a meth addiction and he couldn't get treatment. So he made a compound that was not as bad, but similar for him to do to try to like wean him off. And then they eventually made that compound also illegal. And it eventually has turned into this game of people making like things that are just different enough from meth to be not technically illegal. And then they just get made illegal, and they just keep changing it over and over. And they called that thing bath salts, and then it's a it's a drugs arms race. Yeah, really. but it, I think it it the f the origin was to try to like get people off of meth, which is not a bad thing. It's... But then when <laughs> it, what it wasn't handled properly, I'll I'll say. I mean, that's like the road to hell is paved with bath salt. <laughs> It's paid with bath salts, for sure. For sure. Uh, oh, the new Platinum level Jeez. sponsor, Duke Energy. Which uh, is... What? Duke Energy is one of their Platinum level sponsors, and either my memory's bad, or they were in the... Uh, the uh, episode... The Normie episode. Oh my god, I think you might be right. I think, I think Duke Energy from think Normie right. is is a sponsor of the Blade and Burrow Beast Festival. Uh, That's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a small world. Yeah. I like their logo, their, their, their slogan, making life better for millions of people every day by providing affordable, reliable, and increasingly clean energy. <laughs> yeah. Not <clears throat> clean energy, increasingly clean. Yeah, oh... Uh... Oh, th oh, this is entirely not for uh, the local stuff. Um, if you use a energy supplier that's not Central Hudson, you, um, so because I do that, you can one, negotiate stuff down so you're not going to get hit by them jacking the prices up 50%. But then when you do that, you get an email from Central Hudson saying that if you ever change your contract or energy provider... The moment you do that, you're going to get hit with a adjustment bill, <laughs> which it sounds, I think, is very ominous. So I can never change well, my power provider. Yeah, Central Hudson in general, uh, this is super duper local, but Central Hudson kind of fucking sucks. They got yelled at by a senator <laughs> for being so shitty. Yeah, I mean, I got hit by a, a fucking $300 bill. I had two coworkers got hit by a five. One was hit by a five thousand dollar bill, and the other was hit by an eight thousand dollar bill. How? Because here's what they did: they they transferred their uh, billing systems over, and then people just didn't notice that for like the better part of a year they were never billed. And then when they got their follow up bill, it was the combination of all of those bills plus late fees bundled into one. Yeah. So, 
by given the fact that we're talking about super local, hyper local stuff. Well, actually, no. Central Hudson's actually not that hyper loco local. It is pretty much the Hudson Valley that they cover. Yeah. So like that's that's at the very least New York. Yeah, that's it's New York for sure. Um, for our listeners, uh, the, you, the episodes. Yeah, done. the episodes done. Always call when you renew your energy contracts. Never just hit the default re sign up thing because that price is higher than the actual. Like you, you can knock off like three cents per kilowatt hour. So there you go. If you if you, if you no one hears adulting yet, when you do things, call them when you do it, and then they just give you a lower price. Uh, there's your fun fact. I will continue. I will continue not to do that because that's inter- <laughs> That's social interaction. I don't want to do that. That's social interaction that saves you three cents per kilowatt hour. Yep, but it's, <laughs> it's social interaction. That's the price. That's, yeah. that's the gotcha like three cents per kilowatt hour is the price i am willing to pay <laughs> to not have to have that conversation with someone <laughs> oh and here's another don't secret there's bigger garbage cans but they don't tell you about it unless you call i barely use the garbage cans that i have so like oh so that's that's not a problem for you okay <laughs> yeah yeah uh, who do you have waste management yeah we, oh let's get even more local yeah i got waste management waste management's not that local no well yeah they're all over yeah there's <laughs> uh, killer content yeah all right uh, well let's finish the episode uh, as always, our website's CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. Uh, if you want to email us, uh, it's CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Although, it would be probably better if you go to the Patreon, um, where we have Jackalope-level sponsors, including Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, and Bushcraft Kelso. We have a Facebook group that we... I literally haven't done anything in a year. Um, <laughs> in the dis- but we do have a Discord group that talked about Godzilla's penis for a while. There was that that or rather Godzilla's entire genital situation. That at, I was at work and it's, I think it was around six o'clock in the morning. Like just there is just blowing up on Godzilla junk in there. Yeah, I I was like I came back to I came to that and was just like oh, huh. Well, no, I. And then I, then of course I had to make a comment because you, I'm John. You're John. Well, I saw that and I was like, oh, John clearly hasn't seen this yet. And then I saw like John is typing and I was like, oh, here comes like a breakdown of the different directors, like in how they handled like gender in the different Godzilla movies. I, I, so I said this in the, um, my thread thingy. I honestly view Godzilla as like a gendered. So like. Yeah, I, I I do as well. I haven't, other than Godzilla 2000, had any reason to assign a gender to a giant laser lizard. Yeah. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. The platform you're on supports that. Um, and if you have any monster requests or stories, just uh, just let us know. Indeed, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. On Instagram, I'm at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. Website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at thomasmichaelhill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Weird. <laughs>